Hi, in this video we're talking about something called the ideal gas law. Now, in order for us to really fully understand this, I want to talk about something first, and that's this. Let's say I had a balloon that had one mole of helium gas in it. Now, don't forget, one mole of something means six, about six times 10 to the 23rd particles of that thing. Now, in this case, we're talking about helium, and helium's an element, so those particles would be atoms. So, long story short, this mole of helium contains about six times 10 to the 23rd atoms of helium. Now, if I had a balloon that had the exact same amount of a different gas, and it's at the same temperature and pressure, let's say it's at standard temperature and pressure, or STP, um, the truth is that a mole of neon, in this second example, would have the exact same volume. And I could bring in a third example, same temperature, same pressure, same amount of the gas, one mole across all three of these examples. The only difference is that now the third balloon has carbon dioxide. So between all three of these balloons, they have different substances, but what's the same is their volume. And this is according to Avogadro. He said that equal amounts of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain the exact same volume of gas. And that is called the molar volume. Now, one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters at standard temperature and pressure. Now, the temperature or the pressure changes, that volume is going to change as well. But if you take that 22.4 liters and put it over one mole, sometimes it's helpful to think of molar volume in that way because oftentimes we're using this quantity to convert between volume and amount or between liters and moles. Um, you can also think of this kind of similar to molar mass. Molar mass is a little different. First of all, it's a mass and not a volume. Um, and it's specific to the substance, whereas molar volume is something that's kind of across the board, doesn't matter what the substance is, the molar volume is the same. Um, but here's their similarity. They're both per one mole. And so you can use this as a, as a quick conversion factor to go between moles and either volume for molar volume or mass for molar mass. Now back to that definition, one mole of gas occupies 22.4 liters at STP. STP, don't forget, is 273 kelvins, that's standard temperature, and one atmosphere is standard pressure. Now, I just want to point this out. We've got one mole here, which is N. We've got a volume, which is V. I have a temperature T and a pressure P. We have enough to fill in one complete side of the combined gas law equation, so let's do that. Here's the combined gas law. Let's take just one side of this, P times V over N over T, and let's plug in uh, values from that definition. So the standard pressure was one atmosphere. Volume, that molar volume is 22.4 liters per one mole. And standard temperature is 273 kelvins. When I divide these values, I get this number, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole kelvin. Now this is specific to the pressure being in atmospheres, the volume being in liters, moles and kelvins for temperature, but this is called the ideal gas constant. Sometimes it's referred to as the universal gas constant. Uh, and this gets a letter capital R uh, when used in equations. Now, again, R can change if any of these units change for any of these measurements, P, V, N, and T. So maybe you've got a different R, but in my class, we use liters for volume, atmospheres for pressure, moles, and kelvins for temperature. And so 0 0.0821 is going to be what we'll use for R. So let me sub R back in for that, and let me return all of these values to their variables, P, V, N, and T. Now I want to rearrange this equation to remove a fraction. So it's a nice, simple equation, and I get this. P, V equals NRT. And that is the ideal gas law. Now, what's so special about the ideal gas law? The ideal gas law is a quick tool to uh, find a missing piece of information about a gas without changing the gas. Combined gas law is good for uh, changes. You've got situation one and situation two. But the ideal gas law, uh, using that R constant in there, that ideal gas constant, allows us to figure out information about any gas um, without making a change. And so, 
Uh, the important thing to note about this is that pressure must be in atmospheres. If the problem, if you're doing a problem and it gives you millimeters of mercury or tor or kilopascals, you got to convert to atmospheres. The same is true for volume. That's got to be in liters. So if you've got milliliters, you've got to convert that. Uh, sometimes problems will give you grams, which is a mass, and you'd have to convert that to moles. Luckily, R will always be the same as long as all of these other units are uh, matching what I have here on the screen. And then temperature, of course, can't be in Kelvins or certainly not Fahrenheit. Uh, so that's got to be in, uh, I'm sorry, of course it can't be in Celsius and certainly it wouldn't be in Fahrenheit, but it's got to be in Kelvins. That's, uh, that's kind of our uh, temperature unit of um, necessity. So let's do a couple of these example problems. This one says, at what pressure? So we're looking for P. At what pressure will 2.18 moles, so there's N, of chlorine gas occupy two liters, there's the volume, at 308 uh, kelvins? So that is temperature. Now, I started easy. We don't have to convert any of these. This is already in moles, this is liters, this is kelvins. So we're just solving for pressure and our resulting unit will be in atmospheres. So let's start with PV equals NRT. I wanna rearrange this for P. So if I divide both sides by V, I get NRT over V. That's what P is equivalent to. So let's plug in what we have then. P is NRT over V. I've got 2.18 moles for N. Uh, for R, I have 0 0.0821. That is the grossest zero I've ever drawn. There we go. It's still pretty bad. Uh, temperature is 308 kelvins. And then the volume I'm dividing by is 2.00. Uh, you never really want to use that 0 0.0821 for significant figures determination. So we'll look at all the other uh, measurements in the problem. Uh, this one, you need three significant figures. So the pressure on this is actually kind of large, 27.6, and that's atmospheres. Now compare that against the pressure that you're experiencing probably now, which is one atmosphere. It's 27, 28 times what you're experiencing, so certainly not, certainly not comfortable. Let's do another example. This says a 395 milliliter, uh-oh, 395 milliliters has got to go to liters. Now, how do I do that? Well, some of you know at this point you divide by 1,000, but why is that the case? Let me just quick do the workout for this. 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. So if I set up the dimensional analysis for this, I'll actually get the... Uh, uh, the correct answer, two, for that new volume. So I want to use this for V. Um, it then says, you know, this sample of water vapor at 233 degrees Celsius. So there's another conversion we'll have to do if we take 233 and add 273 to it. Man, I should be able to do that in my head, but it's been a long day. So let me just use my calculator here. Four, uh, I'm sorry, 506 uh, Kelvins. So I want to use that for T. Uh, and then it says exerts a pressure of 851 millimeters of mercury. Oh my gosh, 851 millimeters of mercury. I want to multiply by one atmosphere over 760 millimeters of mercury because that's my conversion factor between these two. Um, this is kind of all shoved up toward the top there. I'm sorry about this, but I end up with uh, 1.12 atmospheres, atmospheres. Good, so now that I've converted all of the things to the proper um, units, I wanna kinda take stock of what I have. I know a volume, temperature, and pressure about this gas, but I need to figure out the mass. Well, that's maybe not as direct as the last problem because nowhere in this equation is mass. We've got pressure. And good, we have that. We've got volume, we've got that. N, I don't know that. I know R is always constant at 0 0.0821 and the temperature is, all, is given to us, it's 506 kelvins. So what I'm missing is moles. And if I think about this, I'll know that moles can convert to mass as long as I know what the substance is. And in this case, it tells me that it is water vapor. So I'm gonna use that information in a second. Let me first rearrange this equation to solve for N. N is equal to PV over RT, just a little algebra there. So let me use this equation to solve for N. PV over RT, I plug in for my pressure, I'm using the atmosphere version, 1.12, 1 
Volume, I'm going to use liters, so 0 0.395. Uh, R is 0 0.0821. And then the temperature, again, I want to use the Kelvin version of that, so 506. And let me plug in. Uh, again, on this one should be three significant figures. Some teachers will say just to wait until the end to assess significant figures. Um, this is a pretty small number. So I want to show you this number, and then I also want to show you one thing about scientific notation. Uh, my calculator gives me, let me just double check this before I write it down. Yep, that's all right. My calculator gives me this for the number of moles, 0 0.0106 moles. Now, if you're taking AP chemistry and you're watching this video, or if your teacher just prefers this to be in scientific notation, personally, I don't mind if you write this. But a number this small probably is a good candidate for scientific notation. So I just want to show you what that would be. Um, this would be 1.06 times 10 to the negative, because it's smaller than 1, 1, 2, negative 2 moles. So either of these answers, the numbers are exactly the same. Either of these answers uh, would be just fine. Uh, they both have three significant figures in them, and they both have the same unit. So it's good to go. Now, is this my final answer? No, because I'm looking for the mass of the sample of water. So pick your poison here, whichever one you want. You want to take this uh, number of moles of water because that's what the problem says. This is H2O. And you want to convert it into grams. Now, the way to do that is with the molar mass of water. And so one mole of water has what mass? Well, um, each hydrogen is one gram per mole. There's two of them, so that's up to two. And then we add 16. That's the mass of an oxygen. So uh, this is 18.02. If you look at a periodic table, you see where that 0 0.02 comes from. Is the 0 0.02 necessary? Really not. It really is not necessary. Uh, you'll get, especially when we're rounding to three significant figures here, it'll probably all work out uh, in the wash. So 0 0.0106 times 18.02 uh, gives me this, 0 0.191 grams of water. Now we talked about significant. Uh, we talked about scientific notation just a second ago. This might be another good candidate for scientific notation. Maybe not. It really depends on kind of what you prefer or what your teacher prefers. But this could also be 1.91 times 10 to the negative first grams of water. Uh, both of those are the same value. Um, these get a lot smaller in some other problems, times 10 to the negative fourth or seventh. Um, then you're going to want to use scientific notation because a bunch of those leading zeros is, is just kind of a pain. So that's it. That's the ideal gas law. It's PV equals NRT. Crazy powerful uh, equation for looking at gases and pulling a bunch of information about a gas out of its other properties. Pressure, volume, moles, and temperature. Thank you.